to be very honest, we did this review we were, because we were invited to write this review. Uh, it has appeared in a very prestigious journal, Chemical Reviews. And uh, these jour this journal started also to have so-called thematic issues. And uh, electrochemical interfaces are of strong current interest in the context of electrochemical energy on con conversion and storage. And, uh, but also there, computational studies uh, contribute more and more to understanding these interfaces. So this was the reason for uh, proposing such a thematic issue by some colleagues. And due to our experience in the so-called epigenetic molecular dynamic simulation of metal-water interfaces, we were then asked to contribute to this issue uh, uh, with, a, the, with the review about this particular topic. Electrochemical interfaces, as I just said, are uh, very critical for many, many applications in electrochemical energy storage and conversion. Uh, typically, uh, electrochemistry, interfacial electrochemistry occurs at an interface between an electrolyte, which is an ion conductor, and an electrode, which is an electron conductor. And often they are solid-liquid interfaces. So the electrolyte is liquid and the electrode uh, is, is a solid electrode. And this is also how it works in many batteries, in fuel cells, in, in many of these electrochemical devices. Uh, the, the particular method that we have been using is this abnitial molecular dynamics. And the problem with these interfaces is that a liquid is a liquid is a liquid. This means that uh, it's disordered. You can't just do one snapshot and calculate. So typically when we perform calculations of materials, we look up the structure and then we, uh, we call it, we go into a local minimum, we look at the minimum energy structure. This doesn't exist in a, in, or it does exist if, if it uh, becomes ice, but as, uh, if uh, when, the, when water, for example, is liquid, then there are many, many different configurations, in principle, uh, uh, unmeasurable many. And so we need a method that we can average. So we have to average over many, many different configurations. There are different ways that are very known in chemistry and physics, but molecular dynamics is one specific method. So you just do a long movie. In principle, it's like a movie. You can watch it, you can see the atoms move, and then we do the appropriate averages. And uh, this is well known. So molecular dynamics is well known. Epinitio is also well known. Epinitio means from first principle. This means these are quantum chemistry calculations where the only input are the positions and uh, the, the, the elements uh, uh, themselves. Uh, but at these electrochemical interfaces, electrons play a very important role. There are lots of polarization effects and one can do molecular dynamics with inexpensive classical force fields, but they can't capture the electric, electronic nature of these interfaces. And so that's why uh, it's in principle necessary to run this epinitial molecular dynamic simulations. The downside is that they're still very expensive. We typically can run uh, molecular dynamics runs in, in, in the order of, let's say, 100 femtoseconds or maybe one picoseconds, which is still a very short uh, time scale, whereas classical uh, simulations, you could even go into the nanoscale regime, which is three orders of magnitude larger. Uh, so we have to choose very carefully which systems we are looking at. And certainly the situation is so that this can't be used still at, as a standard tool to just screen uh, electro electrochemical interfaces. Uh, and, uh, and here, these metal water interfaces play a very important role as a benchmark system. Of course, they are also relevant. Electrocatalytic processes in fuel cells or electrolyzers, they all occur at metal-water interfaces, where the, the metal is the catalyst and water is the electrolyte. Uh, and so these studies uh, are important also for fundamental understanding. And to be very honest, uh, the concepts of describing electrochemical interfaces are about 100 years ago. Uh, there is the so-called Helmholtz model, Good Chapman model, but they are all models that have been derived by, by reasoning without really having an atomistic picture of the interface. Now, we are, due to the increase in computer power and also to do the development of more efficient algorithm, we can now run this simulation with this method at least 
uh, at a sufficient long time and with sufficiently large systems in order to understand what's going on at the interfaces. And the knowledge about these interfaces, especially of the uh, liquid, is still rather limited. And in electrochemistry, uh, at this interface, a so-called electrical double layer builds up. What does it mean? You have an, an electrolyte, an electrolyte is ion conducting, so typically it contains ion. Even pure water contains ion because there's always protons and OH uh, hydroxide groups. So the, and, and these, uh, at the interface between an electrode and electrolyte, it's a similar like a PN junction semiconductor, there are electric fields, and you get a special structure and special electro electric fields by these, uh, due, due to the distribution of the ions. And there is very little known about this. And uh, so that's why these studies are very first step in order to understand the processes. Also in the long run one would then like to understand catalytic processes, that really chemistry occurs, catalytic <coughs> reactions. And uh, by that we would learn step by step how these interfaces work. So it's, it's an important contribution to a better understanding of these fundamental and critical interfaces in electrochemistry. One has to admit that typically metal water interfaces doesn't, do not play such an important role in battery research. Uh, in fact, water would be the ideal electrolyte because it's, uh, uh, it, it, there, it allows high ion mobilities, it doesn't burn, it does, it's not flammable. But the problem with water is that the electrochemical stability window of water is only 1.23 volts. And as you might know, lithium, for example, has a voltage of more than 4 volts. And water would just decompose if you run it in a lithium battery. In fact, there are some battery types like zinc uh, batteries. Zinc has only a voltage of 0.8 and so you could run aqueous electrolytes. There are also trends uh, which, which run under the name water and salt uh, to use water as a basis but make it more stable by having high salt concentrations. So that's why certainly water is also of interest in the battery research. But I would also uh, like to point out that these studies are also interesting and important from a fundamental point of view because as I just said, the structure of these interfaces with the liquid electrolyte are still very unknown. And so uh, understanding a model system where we have in fact also some experimental uh, studies which we can our, which, uh, with which we can our simulations compare uh, helps us then to get a better uh, idea and uh, information about these interfaces. So that's why they're certainly also uh, essential for our uh, for a better understanding of the processes and structures that occur in batteries. There are some really uh, interesting observation. First of all, the question was how is the structure of the first water layer? And uh, there were in fact lots of discussions about it before we had we could uh, have a closer look at it. Is this uh, typically you have an electrode where the water binds kind of strongly. And so the idea was maybe there is one water layer which is strongly bound to the electrode and is more like fixed like an ice-like layer like an, a crystalline layer. And so I had one colleague, uh, he always said, the question was, are these water molecules at the interface soldiers, which are all in line, or are they civilians, uh, which are uh, walking back and forth all the time? And this question now has been clearly answered by these uh, simulations. Water is not an ice-like layer. It has a very uh, dynamic structure. Still, there is a preferential orientation, and this plays an important role, this preferential orientation, because water is a strongly polar solvent. It, uh, you have uh, H2O, you have the positive hydrogen, the negative oxygen, so every water molecule is associated with a relatively strong dipole moment. And so the orientation of the water molecules also plays an important role for the electric fields and also so for all the processes that occur at these electrochemical interfaces. And uh, now we have now really learned how this water orient. And also what was in fact surprising for me is also that these structures are strongly dynamic. 
uh, as I said, we had relatively short run times for our simulations, but we could see that this is not a sta static distribution. The water molecules stay at the surface only for uh, a, a fraction of a picoseconds, and then they go back and forth, back into the electrolyte, and return to the to the surface. So there's it's a strong uh, and strong rearrangement all the time, and. We are now, as I said, these are the first simulations. They are still time consuming. So they are, I might say, uh, very long simulations with huge, we, we do it in a periodic setup. So we call it supercells, periodic cells. So typically we have something like 150 water molecules in a cell and then it's periodically repeated. These simulations, I would say there have been maybe five to 10 performed at all. And so that shows, this says that it's really an, an immature field where one can still do a lot of contributions. And uh, f many of these studies, first of all, concentrated on pure water on the interface. Uh, but now, our days, and this is of course in electrochemistry much more interesting, how is the structure of the interface once you include ions there? And then, of course, you have lots of choices uh, to do these simulations for, because there's many, many different ions. But uh, this is the next step, certainly, that will occur in this field. But already uh, these studies that were there, although there were so few, have already yielded some uh, interesting input and insights that it was worth writing a review article about this.